This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Good evening to you. I'm Ray Cordopassi. And I'm Jackie Bang in for Micah Mater. Until you see the devastation uh, that we all witnessed, uh, maybe through photographs before this morning, but in person today, um, it's difficult to describe. Utter devastation on the Hawaiian island of Maui. At least 53 people are dead. Thousands of others have nowhere to go as wildfires continue raging. WGN's Dana Rebic has spoken with some of the people who were able to escape, and she's live at O'Hare with the latest. Dana? Well, in that update that we received from officials within the last hour, we know the 53 deaths reported all isolated in the city of Lahaina. We had a chance to speak with a woman from Oak Park who is stuck on the island. Uh, she is not in the direct uh, area of these fires, but she is concerned that they could still spread. And another man whose daughter's home was destroyed. I'm still missing people close to me, um, you know, that have lost their homes and I haven't heard from them. And it's really scary to not know where they are and just be hopeful that the issue is communication and not something else. Yeah, the death toll is, is, is shocking. Um, you know, originally thought it was going to be pretty low when it started at six. That number has now climbed to 53 as wildfires continue to rage across the island of Maui. I got stopped and couldn't get through because the fire um, had spread to both sides of the highway and the police weren't allowing you know anyone to get through and the plumes of smoke were were huge. Dan Legenza is from Michigan but has lived on Maui for 25 years. His daughters and ex-wife evacuated their home. He raced to try to reach them but couldn't. His girls spent the night at a shelter in a high school in Nepali and later learned their home was gone. I unfortunately found out that their uh, uh, mom's uh, house uh, neighborhood almost completely burned down. I think there was just one partially standing house and probably, you know, uh, close to 40 houses on one particular street. Uh, so they lost everything. If you ever been to Lahaina, it looks like a bomb went off. I feel sorry for the people. I mean, for probably I'm going to guess two square miles. It's there's nothing left. Mark Martino just made it back to Chicago today, landing at O'Hare. His vacation to Maui cut short. Anyone who's lost a loved one whose home has been damaged or destroyed is going to get help immediately. President Joe Biden pledging federal disaster relief. FEMA surging emergency personnel on Maui. The Coast Guard, Air Force and National Guard all assisting in evacuation efforts as well as several airlines. Alaska, Delta, United uh, and American have increased capacity by bringing in larger, larger planes to ensure we get more seats to get more people off the island. 11,000 travelers got out yesterday. More than 2,000 people are currently housed at four emergency shelters. Another 2,000 are at the Kalalui Airport waiting to leave. I'm going to go around after this and go pick up donations from a lot of my friends and family up country to drive down to the shelters. I don't think that like tonight will be some, you know, an easy sleep for me thinking everything's fine, considering that the fires are still raging. That woman you just heard from is a first grade teacher on Maui. They were supposed to start school yesterday. She says that the start of school has obviously been delayed. We know 11,000 people there without power. That could take weeks to come back. And the man that you heard from tells us he heard reports of looting at grocery stores across the island. Live at O'Hare, Dana Rebic, WGN News. So much to overcome. They're in the thick of it. And people concerned about loved ones in Hawaii can access an online database Providing updates on the search and rescue efforts, the public Google spreadsheet lets users add names of people who they haven't heard from and their last known location. Administrators then update the list when somebody has been discovered. There are about 2,500 names on that list so far, with some marked found. Stunning satellite images showing near total destruction in the town of Lahaina. County officials, as we mentioned, tells the New York Times all of the state's 53 fire deaths are from here. Lahaina has special significance for Native Hawaiians as the capital of the former Hawaiian Kingdom. The town became a hugely popular tourist destination with about 13,000 residents, but it's now reduced to ash and rubble. The destruction will leave a major impact on Hawaii's tourism industry and will likely take years 
to rebuild. Even if those evacuations are underway, others are working to get to Maui tonight. Yeah, volunteers all around the country are finding ways to offer support. And WGN's Christine Flores spoke with one man preparing to leave, and she joins us from the newsroom with more on that. Christine? Well, Jackie and Ray, good evening. As those wildfires in Hawaii continue to burn, there have been a number of organizations with trained volunteers stepping in to help. One man tells me he volunteered to go this morning and within a few hours received a call for his deployment. I'm in the process of packing right now. Um, you know, I'll take all my personal things and then uh, there's some things that I've uh, found to be useful in the past. Um, when I'm uh, out in the field uh, doing work for the Red Cross. Paul Bamman leaves tomorrow morning for Maui. He'll join other Red Cross volunteers in distributing supplies to help those impacted by the wildfires. He's currently in South Suburban Frankfurt and a part of the Greater Chicago Chapter. This deployment, because it is such a far distance to get to, it's a, a minimum of three weeks. Bamin has been assisting through the organization since 2018, helping people impacted by tornadoes, flooding, hurricanes, and the California wildfires. Every single uh, deployment I've gone on is different. No two tornadoes are ever the same. Uh, no two hurricanes are ever the same. So this wildfire won't be the same as uh, California's. Another group on the ground is World Central Kitchen. I am in uh, Wailuku. Maui, and uh, what you can see here behind me is one of at least five different evacuation centers. That's Sam, us. who's with the nonprofit organization that arrived last night to support food and water needs for first responders, evacuated residents, and tourists. Their team says they've delivered hundreds of sandwiches to emergency workers fighting the blaze near Lahaina. They are now visiting shelters and rural communities on Maui and the Big Island to fill meal needs. Those being called to assist say they do it for a special reason. You try to uh, focus on what the mission is, and that is to uh, take care of people, help them on their path to recovery. As of Thursday afternoon, the death toll on Maui had grown to at least 53 people. Images provide evidence of the devastation showing destroyed homes and wiped out communities. It isn't until your boots on the ground and you turn in all 360 degree direction and all you see is devastation. Officials say majority of the fatalities so far in the area in the village of Lahaina, adding that the search isn't over yet. Jackie and Ray. All right, Christine, we wish him well. Thank you. And stay with WGN for continuing coverage of the deadly wildfires. You can follow all of our coverage at WGNTV.com or by downloading the WGN TV app.